So it seems that we're winning loads of medals in Rio. Well, it doesn't seem. We are winning loads of medals in Rio. And before the Olympics started, I thought it would be interesting to use some of the research I've done in other sports to figure out uh, why Team GB is doing so well. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Please like or dislike the video or leave a comment below. That will allow me to produce better videos and more of them in the future. So some of my memories of the Olympics in the past uh, were a little bit disappointing. And uh, I, th I can try to remember the first Olympics I ever watched. It's probably 76, I think, if I remember correctly. I couldn't tell you a thing about it because I can't remember anything from that far back. But um, as the years went on, um, it became uh, of more interest to me, especially as I was quite sporty when I was young. So I always remember the battle between Co and Ovet um, being a highlight of my Olympic memories. That was just such an epic battle. And the fact that they were breaking world records every other week, it seemed. And then, of course, there was this huge clash at the Olympics. Um, so, yeah, I, I remember that really well. Uh, but if you look at the era that we're in now, you know, Team GB is winning medals all over the place. And that hasn't always been the case. And if you go back in recent history, if you go back all the way to Atlanta uh, in 1996, we only actually won one gold medal, which is, uh, you know, incomparable to how well we've been doing at Rio. So what's the cause behind all of that? Well, uh, actually, if I can uh, show you what the cause behind that is, uh, it's this thing here. It's, it's a lottery ticket. So uh, John Major, when he came to power, started the lottery. Uh, which I didn't like because I was messing around on the football pools in the mid 80s, uh, mid 90s rather. And uh, the lottery basically destroyed the football pools. That, that was game over for the football pools, completely demolished it uh, because everybody started playing the lottery and nobody bothered to pay the football pools and they disintegrated. But one of the legacies of that uh, decision to do the lottery was that a lot of funding started to go into athletics and uh, you know elite performance i think they call it something along those lines and it's interesting because if you look at what's happened since atlanta in atlanta we got one gold uh, when we moved to sydney we ended up with 11 then we got nine um, at athens but things really started to pick up dramatically when we went to beijing where we got 19 golds and then we got 29 at london 2012 and this year goodness knows how many we're going to end up with so you can see that the, the pattern there um, is highly correlated to the amount of funding that the sport has got. And the sports, uh, overall athletics, all sports, has been a significant benefactor of the funding uh, from the National Lottery. Because um, the lottery is set up to benefit good causes and, and other things. So the fact that people are buying loads of tickets has been helping fund athletics. But to what extent has that happened? Now, you'll remember that, you know, if you've seen some of my other videos, this is a common theme. So in football, where there's lots of funding, teams tend to perform better. And it's not necessarily, obviously, you need skill and all of those things in place as well. That's a given. But there are plenty of skillful people out there that never make it. Lots of people that did very well. I remember very good footballers at school um, who you thought, well, they're definitely going to be a top player and they just never made it. So it's the structural changes that occur when you put lots of funding in that generate a lot of the opportunity. So people get discovered, they get nurtured, they're given a career path where they don't have to worry about money, um, they can pursue their dreams. Um, and that's the, you know, the benefit of that sort of structure. So I imagine that probably in future years, Team GB may have a bit of a struggle as other countries begin to try and copy uh, that particular model. And, you know, it does give everybody a boost uh, to watch uh, Team GB trouncing loads of other countries in individual sports, you know. But the amount of funding that's gone into it has been quite dramatic. So if we go back to Sydney, um, there was 59 million uh, funded for elite performance athletes. Then in the Olympics after that, um, in Athens, it went up to 71 million. And then when we look at uh, funding for London 2012, where we had a really big push to get loads of medals, that funding went up to 235 million. That's pretty big numbers, but nothing compared to what they've chucked at Rio. So if you look at the funding that's gone for Rio, it's 264 million. So, you know, I, I sort of um, didn't want to produce this video almost because you can see that we're chucking loads of money at it and that's why we're getting loads of medals. When in fact the enthusiasm and um, the enjoyment that people are getting from watching these elite athletes perform so well 
uh, may be tempered somewhat by realising that we've probably bought a few medals. And not directly, of course, but uh, indirectly through the amount of funding that's gone into sport. And a lot of other countries simply can't compete. If you look at the amount of GDP um, by, for, for each country, then some countries should be performing a lot better. But they just don't put the money into it. And therefore, there are no athletes from there. And if you look at cultural issues, for example, India, with such a huge population, is bound to have some really good athletes out there. But they have yet to be discovered. The structure does not exist. But yeah, I thought it was interesting thoughts, seeing as it's a, a topical thing that I popped this video up. Um, but you can see a direct correlation. If you look back at Atlanta, where we had one gold compared to London 2012, ne necessarily that's going to be a bit higher anyway, because it's a home advantage and so on, where we got 29. But the amount of funding that we're putting into the sport is delivering results. So it'll be interesting to see what happens from here on in, whether that funding goes up again uh, during the next Olympics, whether it stays the same, or whether other countries start uh, to increase their funding. Um, and therefore we get into a bit of an arms race in terms of how much money spent trying to win medals. But uh, anyway, that's a little note on the Olympics. Some research that I did before the Olympics started, uh, which I did out of curiosity and based upon the stuff I've done in football. And you can see a direct correlation there between medals and funding for individual sports. I thought that may be interesting for you. Anyway, I hope that uh, the rest of the Olympics goes really well. We win even more medals and uh, I'm looking forward to Tokyo 2020. Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get instant notification of new videos as they're released.